Science Attica feels rejuvenated as a result of a significant package of updates. There are fresher looks, a more modern cabin, more frugal engines and stronger standards of safety. Plus, this compact mid-sized SUV remains dynamically adept in a way few rivals can match. Few cars can claim to have redefined their market segment, but we think this is one of them, say it's Attica. It's a mid-sized SUV as you can see, but it's one of the smaller Qashqai sized ones and it completely redefined the way a car of this kind should drive at its original launch in 2016. But the competition has been catching up, hence the need for this revised version of this first generation model. This update was announced in the spring of 2020. Expectations from the Spanish brand are high here because, to date, this has been one of the company's best-selling cars. Over 300,000 examples of the original version have been sold, 40,000 in Britain. Now, Seat knows not to change a good thing too radically, which is why nothing to extremes has been done here. Nothing much needed to be. The Attica was already the best handling car in the segment, one of the more affordable and also one of the more efficient, but its looks were becoming over familiar. So Sayat has tweaked those at the same time as adding the latest screen tech to the cabin. Plus there's been some mild tinkering in the engine range. Lots of other rivals though can offer smart looks, cutting edge media tech and decent efficiency. The reason you might still want an Attica though, as already suggested, and we're going to see, has to do with the way that it drives. An almost unique selling point that this Iberian crossover is going to need against key new segment challengers like the third generation Nissan Qashqai. Will this light update really be enough to face down rivals of that calibre? Well, that's what we're here to find out. When it comes to the kind of drive dynamics you can expect from an affordable mid-sized SUV, the bar has been raised since the original version of this car was first launched back in 2016. Back then, driving a typical family crossover was about as much fun as pushing a shopping trolley. Nissan's Qashqai had pushed the boundaries in that respect a little further, but it was left to the original Attica to show what was really possible in this regard. It set a new standard, plain and simple, not because of any great engineering feats of design. Uh, most versions of this Seat have to make do with basic torsion beam suspension and all the mechanicals come straight from the VW Group parts bin. More because of the way that the whole confection was fine-tuned with extraordinary care by the Barcelona brand's engineers. We were impressed but time moves on. This revised Attica has no dynamic changes and it has to now compete against crossovers of the dynamic quality of Ford's Puma and Nissan's third generation Qashqai. Against that kind of perspective, how does this Seat feel today? drive at seven or eight tenths and there's pretty much no difference between the dynamic responses you'll get from this Seat and those of the Leon hatchback that it's based on. Only when you are pushed right up to the limit does this Attica's taller stance and slightly extra weight start to tell and even then the car's pretty responsive uh, with well controlled body roll and enthusiastic levels of grip and traction. As before, sophisticated multi-link rear suspension and DCC dynamic chassis control adaptive damping. Uh, they're limited to the most powerful Cupra petrol variant that hardly anyone will choose. Apparently though, uh, neither of those things are really needed if a car of this kind is to be able to handle with a bit of vim and vigor. Instead, the Attica proves that relatively lightweight, a simple, firmly structured chassis and fearsome electric power steering can be enough in the hands of the right engineers to create a confident and engaging package. 
You can't have everything, of course. Uh, the combination of the rather stiff setup needed for this kind of showing and the use on most models of that rather crude torsion beam suspension setup was never going to make the ride quality of this car class leadingly supple in the way that, say, a Renault Kajar can be in this class. It's nothing that you couldn't quite happily live with, though, and in many ways it adds to the assertive, positive demeanour of this car. Now we should talk about engines because when it comes to what lies beneath the bonnet here, quite a lot has changed in terms of what this Attica can now offer. There is an all new pair of 2 litre diesel power plants. Uh, the lower powered 115 PS unit replaces the old car's ageing 1.6 litre TDI. And the base uh, 1 litre TSI petrol engine gets quite a far reaching package of efficiency changes uh, which we'll brief you on in our cost of ownership section. Sayat expects though that most Attica customers will give those units no more than a cursory glance on their way to sign up for the 1.5 litre TSI Evo petrol unit that we're trying here, a power plant introduced towards the latter end of the pre facelifted model's production run. We can understand why this 150 PS uh, petrol 1.5 litre would be the typical Attica customer's power plant of choice. It's as clean and frugal as the base 115 PS petrol 1 litre unit, yet the rest of 62 time of 8.5 seconds is over 2 seconds quicker and the 124 miles an hour top speed is 10 mph higher. All of this is thanks to an extra 50 newton meters of pulling power, which makes this 1.5 litre Attica car feel far more lively through the gears than the base petrol variant. Ah yes, transmission, well that's another advantage of choosing the larger engine. It gives you the option of being able to specify the 7 speed DSG auto gearbox that we're trying here. Of course, there's always a chance that you might like a diesel. Sat still thinks that a decent proportion of Vatica customers are going to want to fuel from the black pump. So uh, it has completely evolved its TDI technology. Now that is now based around a single, much cleaner, twin dosing 2 litre unit, uh, which most will want in base 115 PS form. If that's not fast enough, a 150 PS version of that unit is also offered, and that delivers a plump 340 newton meters of torque and it's capable of 62 in 8.8 .8 seconds en route to 124 miles an hour. That is in front-driven manual form, but it's only fractionally slower if you choose an automatic with or without Seat's four-drive all-wheel drive system. That four-drive system is conditional if you're one of the rare Attica folk tempted by the two petrol performance versions of this car, uh, both of which pair a familiar VW Group 2.0-litre TSI turbo unit with the Paddleshift DSG Auto. Uh, these top variants, by the way, are the only ones in the range that get the more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension setup that we referred to earlier. In 190 PS form, a 2.0-litre TSI Attica sprints from rest to 62 in 7.1 seconds en route to 132 miles an hour, and the top 300 PS Cupra model improves those stats to 4.9 seconds and 153 mph. It sits 10 millimeters lower to the ground, and for this market at least, it's the only Attica that can be had with adaptive damping, and that's the usual Volkswagen Group DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control System. We're a little disappointed by that because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the ride quality here is a little on the firm side and it would be nice on a mainstream model to be able to occasionally soften it a little for urban use. As it is, uh, the brand's drive profile selection driving mode system, uh, now that is now standard across the range, merely allows you to tune the steering, the throttle and the climate system settings via Eco, Normal and Sport, uh, plus there is an individual menu that will allow you to set up your own parameters. You get more drive settings if you opt for an Attica variant equipped with the four drive system and it's worth saying a bit more about the all-wheel drive Attica proposition before we finish. With a four drive model like that the central dash infotainment screen will gain an extra off-road information display and if you switch into that you'll also have the option of selecting HDC hill descent control which will ease you down slippery slopes. The same display also updates you on temperatures, front wheel angles and your 
your height above sea level. If all of that is enough to encourage a trip off piste, then we'd encourage you to manage your expectations. Uh, the ground clearance of this car is, after all, a relatively modest 187 millimeters. Still, uh, there's an acceptable approach angle of 20 degrees and a ramp breakover angle of 19.4 degrees, uh, which does mean that you've got enough capability here to give the on-demand four drive system a little uh, workout at least. As you'd expect in a crossover, this fifth generation Haldex multi-plate setup is one of those that keeps you front driven most of the time and brings in the rear wheels only when a lack of traction makes that absolutely necessary. All well and good, but by and large, you don't choose an affordable mid-sized family SUV for its off-road prowess, or if you do, it's unlikely that you'd be choosing this one. Um, in fact, up until this Attica's original launch back in 2016, you wouldn't have bought a mid-sized family SUV for its on-road prowess either. But this Seat changed things in that regard, and to some extent it still does. Now you realise that from the moment you settle into the grippy little sports seat, you press the heartbeat style starter button and view the glowing red italicized instrument needles. It all promises much and for once in a family SUV, much is actually delivered. But Seat's rivals are catching up. Much will be required of the next generation version of this car. For now though, there's still plenty here to keep customers loyal. Lots is said by Seat about this Attica's supposed Spanishness, but unlike its smaller SUV stablemate, the Arona, and its only slightly larger crossover cousin, the Cupra Fomentor, it's not built at Seat's main factory in Martorell near Barcelona. Instead, the Attica actually rolls down the production lines of Skoda's Kvasny plant in the Czech Republic, alongside one of its direct crossover competitors, the Czech maker's Karok model. Add to this the fact that the Attica sits on a Volkswagen Group MQB platform, onto which are bolted all of the Wolfsburg maker's current mainstream engines, and you would be forgiven for wondering whether any Iberian genes actually remain in its makeup at all. Uh, predictably, the car's designer, Alejandro Metonera Romanos, has no such doubts though. The Attica, he says, is a car that could only have been created in Barcelona. We're not sure we'd agree with that. It is the kind of design that you could imagine might have been created by a number of the mainstream brands. But what is important here is that this Seat remains a decently good looking thing. Uh, it's confident in its proportions, which uh, almost down to the millimeter replicate those of this model's arch rival, Nissan's Qashqai. Now that surely can't be a coincidence. Uh, the way that the whole thing is packaged though is of course quite different, uh, especially in this facelifted guys here, where here at the front, the grill now makes more of a statement and it is now flanked by full LED headlamps and they're framed by a more distinctive daytime running light graphic. Uh, these intake style panels, which incorporate the front fog lamps, well, they've been restyled too. And the whole of this lower section is different as well, as is the bumper, which as before has a sportier look if you go for the FR spec model that many will want. Uh, this top experience version, uh, this is distinguished by the aluminium finish lower valance. Uh, whichever variant you go for though, the result of all this is a whole lot more overtaking presence. It's a bit different at the back too, where the Attica gains full LED tail lamps that on top variants feature trendy sweeping indicators. Uh, once more, there's a restyled bumper, which again has a slightly different look with the top FR and experienced derivatives. Uh, the latter features another aluminium look lower trim panel. Uh, across the range with this facelifted model, the exhaust covers are different too. And as with the other recent Seat designs, uh, the model name is embossed in an italicized handwriting graphic. 
Those restyled bumpers have added 18 millimeters to this revised model's overall length, but unless you happen to notice that, the only really obvious difference setting this facelifted Attica's profile apart from its predecessor lies with a range of restyled wheel designs, which sit in slightly squared off arches and range in size from 17 to 19 inches. Uh, we've got the 18 inch brilliant silver rims here. As before, there are just enough crossover cues to identify the Attica as an SUV crossover rather than a family hatch. Dark plastic cladding runs along the bottom of the doors to fool the eye into thinking that the Seat rides higher than it really does. Uh, this experience variant includes side mouldings completed with this aluminium finish and all models now get roof rails that are finished either in black or in aluminium. But uh, there is something else here too. There's a sportier and more dynamic feel than most of the rather pretentious looking models in this segment usually provide. Uh, the precise crease lines help in this regard and so does this neat kink in the edge of the rear window. And the door mirrors sit on the door shoulders and that's a design detail that's usually only found on sports cars. Time to take a seat inside. Now, when we first tested this model back in 2016, uh, we commented that we'd like to have seen the Spanish maker give this car's cabin a more unique and fashionable feel. So, is that what's been served up by this revised version? Possibly not, but it is a significant improvement. It feels a little sportier behind the wheel than your average family mid-sized SUV. Uh, the red illuminated dial needles, the grippier side seat bolsters, and the start button that pulses red like a heartbeat. All of that makes a difference. The big change here though is the step forward in media connectivity, which is evidenced by this larger central infotainment screen. Uh, and then we'll get to that in a moment. But in updating this car, the Barcelona brand has also sweated the details Stuff too. Uh, there is a redesigned and freshly upholstered four spoke steering wheel, plus, there are smarter stitched door panels, and the previous rather somber atmosphere is lifted by matte finished surrounds for the air vents, the gear lever, uh, the climate controls, and for the infotainment system too. Plus, on a plusher variant like this one, uh, there are now luxury touches like multicolor ambient lighting, uh, a rear view camera, micro suede upholstery, and a special heated windscreen. Now that uh, will work almost instantly on frosty mornings because it's coated in an invisible climber coat layer. As before though, with less exalted trim levels than this one, uh, it can seem rather plain in here. Uh, we had hoped to see the future second generation version of this model deliver something a little more in terms of unique cabin design rather than what is basically a Seat Leon family hatch with a better view out the front. Uh, that said though, there's not uh, an awful lot wrong with the Leon layout and you will certainly enjoy the better all round visibility that comes with this Attica's slightly higher a perch. Uh, the front A pillars are slim which helps at junctions. Uh, the front end is reasonably easy to judge and that's thanks to the ridges on the bonnet and it's easy to get comfortable courtesy of the wide range of adjustment that's available for the supportive seat and for this uh, comfortably stitched steering wheel. We mentioned the improved media connectivity earlier and that's appropriate to what Seat describes as one of the most digital mid-sized SUVs on the market. The original model was rather small, five and eight inch center dash displays uh, wouldn't really have fitted that description, but what is served up here gets much closer to it. There's an 8.25 inch monitor for base SE spec models, but most variants gain this larger 9.2 inch connect system screen, which offers online navigation and a new voice recognition system. Uh, there is also online connectivity via an embedded eSIM, which means that the Attica will never lose its connection to the digital world. And it also offers users access to the latest infotainment apps, an e-call safety service, and a private call button, which can connect you through to a SEAT services call center. Uh, there is also an online store, which will allow you to upgrade certain elements of the car's technology after you've bought it. Now that uses an over the air update system which will allow the brand to potentially improve the screen's functionality over time. 
There are also other significant changes with this monitor. Its response times are quicker and existing Attica customers will immediately notice the much clearer and sharper graphics. Now these allow you to either view a full menu of options or select a split screen which will enable you to, for example, uh, display navigation, audio and phone settings all at the same time with a diagonal graphic that's supposedly inspired by the Diagonal Avenue street layout in Barcelona. Another significant change lies in the introduction of a much more sophisticated voice recognition system. This is activated by prefacing what you want with hola hola, which you might find can I help? a little self-conscious saying in front of your passengers. Uh, we have still found this occasionally to be a bit hit and miss. It's a bit like Siri or Google Assistant on your smartphone. That reminds us uh, that, of course, the brand's usual full link, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring connectivity, uh, that still features as before. A text Twitter and Facebook messages can be read out to you as you drive and the software will let you dictate a reply if you really are desperate to comment on a post. This monitor can also take care of climate control via an air care climber screen but unlike an Aleon you don't have to take your eyes off the road and stab away at the monitor every time you're feeling hot or cold because a set of proper physical climate controls are provided on the center stack here. Another thing that sets this car apart from the latest Leon is the fact that most Attica variants still retain analog instrument binnacle dials uh, presented with neat italicized fonts and separated by a 3.5 inch onboard computer display. Now this little screen which uh, shows in color providing you avoid entry level trim can brief you on things like fuel consumption, uh, audio settings, compass readouts and commands for the navigation system too. Uh, obviously it will be replaced by a full width display with the next generation version of this design but for the time being uh, only the very priciest Experience Lux and Cupra versions of this car uh, will get the Seat digital cockpit 10.25 inch digital instrument binnacle screen which features not only on the Leon but also with Seat's larger Taraco SUV. Uh, what you do now get on all Atticas is a wireless phone charger and if you avoid entry level trim you'll get a couple of useful USB ports at the base of the center stack too. Uh, although because they're jacks of the USB-C variety you may well have to use them in conjunction with this uh, unsightly converter lead. Those connectivity points together with the wireless phone charger pad we mentioned earlier are situated in this storage tray ahead of the gear lever alongside a 12 volt port. Uh, talking of storage, there's a reasonable amount of that. All Atticas get a lidded cubby between the seats uh, with a neat ratcheting top that can serve as an armrest. Um, the two cup holders are positioned just in front of that and you get uh, the big door bins which can securely hold a large bottle. The glove box would be of a decent size if it weren't for the space wasted in its upper part with ledges set aside for media features that most customers just won't specify. Uh, there is also this useful stowage box between the driver's seat and provided you don't specify the optional panoramic glass roof you'll get this overhead sunglasses compartment here too. Uh, build quality. That appears to be decent and hard scratchy plastic seem for the most part to have been relegated to areas that you rarely touch. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now the rear doors are a good size and they open wide enough to make access easy. Plus, as with all mid-sized SUVs of this kind, a higher roof line than you'll get on a comparably priced Focus or Leon sized hatch means that it's easy to reach in and strap kids into their child seats. Once inside you'll find another thing that might sell you this car over a conventional family hatch, slightly better standards of rear seat room. Now in truth, there isn't really any more space here than you get in a Leon, but the high roof line certainly makes it feel more spacious. And the way it's all been uh, packaged gives the impression that you could take three adults back here if need be, and that's something that would usually be a bit of a squash in a Focus class model. Uh, that would certainly be easier in an Attica, but you'd still have to be on 
on pretty familiar terms uh, with your fellow passengers. And for the centre occupant, of course, there'll be the need to sit legs astride this central transmission tunnel. If there are only two of you, though, and entry-level trim has been avoided, then you'll get this uh, fold-down central armrest, which incorporates a couple of built-in cup holders. It would have been nice to see a little more seat versatility back here, and we don't really understand why Seat doesn't provide it. After all, the identically engineered and platformed Skoda Karak, uh, which rolls down the same Kvasny Czech Republic production line, uh, has individual seats back here, and they slide and recline. Uh, in this Attica, there's none of that, although to be fair, uh, most of this car's rivals are similarly limited in that regard. At least the practicalities are properly taken care care of though. Uh, there are seat back pockets, uh, there are decently sized door bins here, there are overhead reading lights and uh, centre vents. And providing you avoid entry level trim, twin USB-C ports back here too. Plus there are coat hooks on the B pillars as well as on the overhead grab handles. As usual, we're finished with the boot space. Uh, it's not likely that your Attica will come with a powered tailgate, which is a pity because this rear hatch isn't especially light. Uh, in this case, there's no neat Seat badge opening catch, but once everything's raised, uh, you're faced with a decently sized 510 litre cargo area. That's 130 litres more than you'll get in the Leon. In the unlikely event that you're choosing an all wheel drive, four drive Attica variant, then bear in mind that this capacity figure will fall to 485 litres, but that's still more than many cars in this class can provide. There is a reasonably low loading lip, but it's disappointing that no adjustable height boot floors provided. Now there is some extra room below the cargo area base, but that's only because Seat declines to provide any sort of standard spare wheel. Uh, there are four tie down points and two bag hooks, and we would want to specify the optional boot divider net too. If you need to carry longer items, uh, a ski hatch enables them to be pushed into the cabin without disturbing a couple of rear seated folk. If you need more room, you'll want to push forward the rear seat backs. Now, unfortunately, they are not divided in a convenient 40-20-40 split in the way that they are with, say, uh, the Volkswagen Tiguan, but you do get release levers sit into the upper sides of the boot compartment to more uh, conveniently extend this cargo bay. Uh, the backrests don't fall completely flat and they don't fall far enough for that but uh, it is sufficient to free up uh, 1,604 litres of space uh, or 1,579 litres on a four-drive model. Unfortunately, there's no option for the kind of fold-flat front passenger seat that would extend things still further, so surfboards, things like that, have to go on the roof. Quite a lot has changed in terms of pricing since we first tested this Attica back in 2016. Then an entry level base trimmed one litre model could be yours from around £18,000 with most mainstream variants sold in the £20,000 to £25,000 bracket. At the time of this test in autumn 2020, a base one litre TSI engined Attica cost the best part of £24,000 and for the trim level and engine package that you'll probably want, you'll probably be looking at an up front spend in the 25 to 29,000 pound bracket. That is quite a change, although as we'll see that kind of pricing is now typical for the amount required these days for a car of this kind. In terms of trim levels, you'll probably want to avoid base SE because it lacks a few key features and you'll start your perusal instead from uh, around the £25,000 price point with the SE technology variants. Quite a few folk will like the idea of either a sporty FR model or perhaps the more luxury orientated experience derivative that we're trying here. In either case, uh, your spend there, uh, the starting point needs to be around £28,000. If you can consider Consider spending in the 30 to 35,000 pound bracket, there are plusher FR Sport and Experience Lux derivatives. At the top of the range, the high performance four wheel drive Cupra Attica prices from around 38,000 pounds, and that's a variant that only comes with a 300 PS 2 litre TSI petrol power plant and all wheel drive. 
let's talk about engines and drive systems. Now, you won't be surprised to learn that almost all Atticas are sold with front-wheel drive, as is the segment norm. Uh, from a petrol engine standpoint, say it is confident that quite a number of customers are going to find the significant extra premium, which is necessary to go from the base 1 litre TSI 115 PS variant to their 150 PS 1.5 litre TSI power plant we're trying here. With this larger unit, your dealer will offer you the option of DSG automatic transmission for about £1,800 more. The 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel unit can also be had with optional auto transmission. And if you choose that, your dealer will encourage you to consider spending the extra £1,100 or so that will be required to also fit your Attica out with SEAT's four drive all wheel drive system. Although by that point, you'll be looking at a price starting point of well over £30,000, even with base spec trim. Avoid the SE trim levels and you'll also have the option of a detuned 190 PS version of that 2 litre TSI petrol Cupra power plant we mentioned and that has to be had with DSG automatic transmission and the 4 drive system. Enough with the range, uh, let's position this car for you price-wise within say its own lineup. Uh, there's a big price premium, nearly £4,000 if you choose an Attica rather than say it's identically engineered but more conventional looking family hatch, the Leon, uh, and that's for the Leon hatch. Uh, we can't help thinking that saving around £3,000 by choosing a more spacious Leon estate over an Attica would be a better solution for many potential customers of this SUV or if it is an SUV you simply have to have, then bear in mind you could save five to six thousand pounds by choosing say it's only slightly smaller Arona crossover. Uh, the other similarly sized SUV that the Spanish brand makes is the Cupra El Born, but that's a full EV and you'll be looking at well over 30,000 pounds for one of those. What about rivals from other brands? Well, the most obvious comparison to make here is with the Skoda Karok model that shares all the same engineering as this car and which rolls down the same Kvasny production line in the Czech Republic. Uh, a Karok will save you between 900 and 1500 pounds uh, over an equivalently engined Attica, and that depends on the variant you choose. Uh, the Skoda, it lacks the sporty feel of this Seat, but it does have a nicer ride and a bigger boot. It depends what you want. As for other comparably engineered VW Group mid-sized SUVs, well, a uh, Volkswagen T-Roc, that initially looks as if it might be cheaper than this Seat, but actually it costs around about the same once you take spec into account. And the T-Roc isn't as spacious inside. A comparable Audi Q2 costs three to four thousand pounds more. What about options from other brands in the segment? Well, and considering these, make sure you're comparing like with like. It might be tempting, uh, even appropriate, to match this Seat over slightly cheaper SUVs like Ford's Puma, uh, Honda's HRV, Mini's Countryman, uh, the Suzuki Vitara and S-Cross Twins, Vauxhall's Crossland and Mocha Twins, and Jeep's Renegade, but they all undercut this Attica significantly on price for a good reason, namely that they're slightly smaller, 177 millimeter shorter in length in the case of the Puma. Uh, you'll feel that kind of reduction on the back Back seat and in boot space and it could make all the difference. Uh, the cars that we have just mentioned might struggle to function as only vehicle family cars in a way that this Seat wouldn't. A better alternative to put this Seat up against is its arch rival, Nissan's Qashqai. That's priced very similarly. I uh, would also recommend you consider models like uh, Renault's Kajar, uh, Kia Sportage and Hyundai's Tucson. Again, much more directly similar in size to an Attica and again, fairly similarly priced. You'll get a lot of cabin space for less money in the surprisingly competitive MGHS. Slightly larger mid-sized five-seat SUVs will typically cost you two to three thousand pounds more than an Attica. Here we're thinking about cars like Volkswagen's Tiguan, Peugeot's 3008, uh, Vauxhall's Grandland X, Citroen C5 Aircross, Ford's Cougar and Mazda's CX-5. And most premium brand models of this sort, cars like BMW's X1, Audi's Q3, uh, the Mercedes GLA, the Lexus UX and the Volvo XC40, they normally tend to sell at the upper end of the the 30 to 35,000 pound bracket. The Iberian brand is targeting cars like that with its Cupra Formentor model. 
Enough with comparisons. A uh, few of the models we've just mentioned can quite match the sporty, energetic feel of an Attica. And if that's really sold this car to you, then you're going to need to know just how generous Seat has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Even with base SE spec, you get a fair amount. That means full LED headlights and LED front fog lights. Uh, there are 17 inch brilliant silver alloy wheels, uh, power folding mirrors with puddle lights, uh, black roof rails, an alarm, metallic paint, and a range of camera safety features that we'll come to in just a moment. Uh, impressively, there's also all round parking sensors and a park assist system, which will uh, automatically steer the car into spaces for you. Inside with base SE spec, you get dual zone climate control, cruise control with a speed limiter, a wireless phone charger, and an 8.25 inch media system central infotainment screen, which incorporates the brand's full link Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration with Bluetooth, uh, two USB-C ports, and an eight speaker DAB audio system. Probably the main reason you'd upgrade your Attica to the next trim level up, SE technology, is to get the brand's 9.2 inch Connect Central Dash screen, which is standard across the rest of the range and offers 3D map display and voice control, plus online connectivity via an embedded eSIM. Uh, SE technology variants can be identified by their larger 18 inch performance machined alloy wheels and a chromed finish for the roof rails and for the window trim. At this level in the range you get twin USB-C ports front and rear, an SD card slot and a display in the centre of the instrument binnacle which shows in colour. If you want to progress to the next stage in the range, then you have a choice between sporty FR spec or the more luxury orientated experience trim level that we're trying here. Uh, both are similarly priced. In each case, you get 18 inch brilliant silver alloy wheels, dark tinted rear windows, body colored wheel arch surrounds and visible twin exhaust pipes plus auto headlamps and rain sensing wipers, keyless entry, micro suede upholstery, an auto dimming rear view mirror and multicolored ambient lighting. In addition, there's the Seat Drive Profile Selection Driving Mode System, which allows you to alter steering feel, throttle response, and on the DSG Auto models, gear shift timings via your choice of normal, sport, eco, and individual drive settings. FR variants are set apart by a front grille frame in Cosmo Grey, a rear spoiler, front sport seats, and aluminium pedals. Experience variants, meanwhile, are set apart by a climber coat, heated windscreen, front comfort spec seats, a rear view camera, and a clever predictive adaptive cruise control system that we'll brief you on in just a moment. If you like the look of an Attica, but you want one with a real touch of luxury, then choose between the sportiness of FR Sport trim or the luxury of plush experience Lux spec. Again, both those variants are similarly priced. Both get you 19 inch exclusive machined alloy wheels, leather upholstery, heated front seats, and the Seat digital cockpit, which means you get a 10.25 inch digital screen to replace the usual instrument binnacle dials. FR Sport variants are set apart by a Cosmo grey finish for those shiny wheels. Experienced Lux variants meanwhile get a nuclear grey finish for those wheel rims and they're further set apart by a top view surround camera system and a powered tailgate that you can operate with a virtual pedal wave of your foot beneath the bumper. That only leaves an Attica variant which isn't badged as a Seat, the Cupra Attica. Now this performance SUV has a more menacing look than the mainstream models thanks to a bespoke honeycombed front grille, glossy black detailing, special side mouldings, unique bumpers and 19 inch diamond cut alloy wheels with black brake calipers. Plus four tailpipes sit potently within a bespoke rear diffuser. Also included are lowered Cupra Sport Suspension, uh, Cupra Welcome Puddle Lights, and a park assist system with all-round sensors, which will steer you into spaces. Inside a Cupra Attica, uh, the cabin is distinguished by Alcantara-trimmed black sport seats, uh, orange-stitched leather for the steering wheel and the gear shifter, and all the luxury features that we just briefed you on with Experience Lux Spec. 
Plus, there's a bespoke Cupra Drive Profile driving mode system with a wide range of settings which alter not only the feel of the progressive steering and the gear shifts from the 7-speed DSG Sports Auto Transmission, but also suspension feel, and that's thanks to the inclusion of standard DCC dynamic chassis control. Enough with trim levels, let's talk about media connectivity across the range. Now, Sayat promotes this car as its first fully connected vehicle, and that isn't an empty claim. Uh, for a start, whichever kind of Attica you choose, standard across the range is use of this Spanish brand's uh, clever, freely downloadable Sayat Connect app. Uh, with remote access, a uh, year's use of which comes with this car, this allows you to remotely lock or unlock your Attica from wherever you are. Now, if you have uh, forgotten where you parked it, it will give you area notification. And if having got that, you still can't find your car in a crowded car park, then the Connect app will allow you to remotely activate either the alarm, the headlights or the horn. It will also give you a vehicle health report. It will help you to schedule servicing and it'll give you various elements of extra driving data. Plus, the app can tell you if someone is using your Attica and driving it faster than a preset speed, and it can alert you if the car is ever stolen. Avoid base SE trim, and this app has various online features. You can use it for traffic information, for route calculation, and for info on local parking spaces and fuel stations. On two options across the Attica range, uh, there aren't many. Say it would rather that customers looking for extra features simply moved up a trim level. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to pay extra for metallic paint. We have Nevada white here. Uh, you can add a panoramic glass sunroof. Now that will come with multicolored uh, interior ambient lighting if your Attica variant of choice doesn't already have that. In terms of practicalities, well, remember that you'll have to budget more for a space save a spare wheel and for a jack you can add in tow bar pre-installation too and the boot divider net there is a protection pack which includes a load liner for the boot a rear bumper protection film and rubber mats and there are bespoke covers for the seats to protect against pet hairs and damage too Enough with options, uh, on to safety provision now. You'd expect some sort of autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. Uh, Sayets is called Front Assist, and as usual with these sorts of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. Uh, if a potential collision is detected, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, every Attica also gets a tiredness recognition system. Now that uh, will continually monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and it will, if necessary, prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Anyway, all of that is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted across the Attica range, which have helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. Now, when NCAP first tested the Attica back in 2016, it got a very creditable 93% score for adult passengers and an 84% reading for child occupants. For pedestrians, the score fell to 71%, as it usually does on crossovers, thanks to their boxier shape. What else? Well, there are twin front, side and curtain airbags, although disappointingly, you don't also get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. Uh, there are, of course, Isofix charge seat fastenings uh, on the rear bench there. Uh, we also like the inclusion of a multi-collision brake system. Now that recognizes when an impact has occurred and it brakes the car to prevent it being uncontrollably propelled into the oncoming traffic. It is also worth mentioning that like all cars, new cars. This one has an emergency call e-call SOS system that in the event of an accident uh, where the airbags have been triggered, uh, it'll automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include an ASR traction control and an improved ESC stability control system, plus MSR engine braking control, which will stop you a skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. Now, if you do get into a skid, a DSR steering assistance feature will help you to steer out of it. And you get an ABS braking system further assisted by brake control, which works via the ESC stability system 
and a brake booster and helps to reduce stopping time when you really slam on the anchors in an emergency, at which point the hazard lights will automatically flash too. Plus, all Atticas get a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, plus tyre pressure monitoring. If you can stretch to one of the two experienced variants, you get Seat's safety and driving pack. Uh, sadly, it's not optional on the other variants, which includes a key semi-autonomous driving package and three important camera safety elements. Uh, let's start with the freshly added semi-autonomous tech. It's provided in the form of Seat's predictive adaptive cruise control system. This uses feeds from GPS data delivered from the navigation system and input from the front-mounted camera, allowing the car to proactively amend its cruising speed depending on the road layout ahead, uh, taking into account things like bends, roundabouts, uh, junctions, changes in speed limits and built-up areas. The system requires that the driver should always keep at least one hand on the new capacitive steering wheel. Uh, if the wheel rim senses that the driver's hand have left it for more than 15 seconds then there will be a visual and audible warning and then a braking jolt. If the driver continues to fail to respond then an integrated emergency assist system will bring the vehicle to a controlled stop. Now we just mentioned that with the two experienced variants the safety and driving pack also includes three camera safety features. Uh, let's go ahead and brief you on those. Uh, there's traffic sign recognition. Now that will picture speed signs as you pass them and then display them for you on the dash. High beam control, that automatically dips your headlights for you at night. And a lane assist lane keeping system. Now that will warn you when you stray out of your lane and it will apply uh, gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. Now in our experience, the lane keeping system can be a bit intrusive. It helps when it isn't required and it resets itself on each trip so that if you don't like it, you have to keep turning the thing off. Uh, let's finish by telling you that experienced Lux models get two further safety features. Side assist, uh, that stops you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And exit assist, and that alerts passengers to oncoming vehicles when they're just about to open their doors. You might wonder what the running cost efficiency premium might be to run a mid-sized SUV like this one uh, rather than a comparable, more conventional family hatch. Well, we'll try to tell you from a Seat brand perspective. This Attica weighs around 70 kilos more than its identically engineered Leon family hatch showroom stablemate and that, along with the slightly bluffer aerodynamics, explains why its fuel and CO2 stats lag just under 10% behind those of a Leon. Uh, that is pretty par for the course in this segment. Aware of this, Seat has made some effort to improve the engine efficiency of this facelifted Attica model, although perhaps a little surprisingly, the brand hasn't for the time being anyway built into the range any of the mild hybrid electrified tech that you can have on the Leon, and there certainly isn't a PHEV option. That's another thing that you can probably expect to see on the next generation version of this car. So, what has been done here? Well, let's take a look at the two petrol engines that most customers will want. If you've viewed other parts of this film, you'll know that for this test, uh, we've chosen the 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS petrol unit that Seat expects most Attica customers to choose. Now, this features active cylinder management technology. Now that uh, closes down two of the engine's four cylinders under light to medium throttle loads. Now, so effective is this technology that there was the very real possibility of this mid-range petrol unit actually proving to be cleaner and more economical than the base 1 litre TSI 115 PS petrol power plant. So the engineers worked quite a lot on that base unit for this model update. It now features Miller Cycle Tech that optimises valve control with early closure of the inlets. This combines with a higher compression rate and turbocharging, which provides greater control over the air fuel mixture. Uh, the results say SEAT is an efficiency improvement of around 10%. 
All of this though is still only enough to lift the base one litre TSI unit onto an efficiency par with the much more powerful 1.5 litre. Let's get to the WLTP stats. For a one litre TSI Attica, the official combined cycle range is between 39.2 and 43.5 mpg with a CO2 reading of up to 147 grams per kilometre. For this 1.5 litre TSI variant though, the range is between 39.2 and 45.6 mpg and up to 142 grams per kilometre. So, as you can see, there's very little in it. A diesel would do better of course, in terms of CO2 and MPG anyway, especially one of the diesels freshly fitted to this updated Attica. If you think black pump fueled engines are past it, well you should take a look at the TDI units used here, both of which are now 2 litres in size. The detuned 115 PS version of this new unit, uh, which has replaced the previous 1.6 litre TDI power plant, manages comfortably over 60 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and comfortably under 120 grams per kilometre of CO2 with the 17 inch wheels of base SE trim. Obviously for the alternative 2 litre 150 PS variant you'll need to budget for a little more efficiency spend, I think up to 52.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 141 grams per kilometre of CO2. Those excellent diesel figures have been aided by the introduction of so-called twin dosing catalytic converter technology which features dual AdBlue injection and that significantly increases emissions cleanliness. With twin dosing, AdBlue is injected upstream of two SCR catalytic converters arranged in series with the result of cutting emissions of nitrogen oxide by up to 80% compared with the previous 2 litre TDI engine. Uh, bear in mind that you will hit the 2 litre TDI 150 PS models readings by around 5% if you order that with DSG Auto transmission and by around 10% if you choose it with DSG Auto and the 4 drive all wheel drive combination. For completion, we'll finish the efficiency stats by briefing you on the figures of the two performance orientated 2 litre TSI DSG auto petrol 4 drive Attica variants that few customers will want. In 190 PS form, this engine returns up to 34.4 mpg and up to 186 grams per kilometre of CO2. In the 300 PS state of tune, you'll get in the top Cooper version, those figures fall to 32.5 mpg and 197 grams per kilometre. Of course, to achieve the quoted figures on an Attica, much will depend on the driver. The SEAT driver profile driving mode system includes a selectable eco setting. Now that will maximize all the car's systems towards maximum frugality. And whichever version of this model you select, you can monitor its ongoing frugality via various consumption readouts on the vehicle section of the center dash screen. On to maintenance, now as usual with SEAT models you're looking at a garage visit every 10,000 miles or every 12 months, whichever comes around first. At point of purchase you can opt for a two year prepaid servicing plan with monthly payments that at the time of this test in autumn 2020 were affordably pitched at £16.59. To even out the cost of regular maintenance you can take up fixed price servicing packages for up to three scheduled halts and they go with the car when you sell it if the balance has still to be used. Uh, bear in mind that on a TDI diesel model you'll have to periodically uh, top up that AdBlue fuel additive which cleans up the emissions. What else? Uh, well we like the fact that misfueling protection is standard across the range so you won't be able to accidentally put petrol in your diesel Attica or vice versa. Less impressive is the three year 60,000 mile warranty cover. Can't see why SAT couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles since that's what you get on the mechanically very similar Volkswagen vans. Uh, doing that though of course wouldn't give SAT dealers so much of an opportunity to sell those extended warranty warranty packages. Uh, the paintwork warranty that lasts for three years and as you'd expect this car is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. 
What about residual values? Well, if you choose a mainstream model and don't go mad with the extras, experts predict that after three years and 36,000 miles, you should be able to get up to half of your original purchase price back. And that's a decent return on investment for a volume branded car in this class. Insurance groupings for mainstream Attica variants start at 11E or 12E for the one litre TSI. Think 17E or 18E for this 1.5 litre TSI Evo 150 PS model. It's 23E for the 2 litre TSI 190 PS 4 drive DSG variant. At the top Cupra rates at group 33E. If you are fueling from the black pump, you'll find that insurance groupings for the 2 litre TDI diesel variants tend to sit in the 17E to 19E bracket. If you didn't already want an Attica, then there's nothing added as part of this mid-term update that would radically reposition this car in your thinking. But if you were approaching the purchase of one of the smaller volume brand mid-sized SUVs with an open mind and you tried the improved version of this Seat, then we think you'd like what you'd found. Uh, this Attica now feels like an up to the minute crossover rather than one launched half a decade ago. Now that's the object of any facelift, but not all of them achieve that goal. The engine changes are probably most significant with greater economy and lower emissions for the base petrol and diesel units that most Attica buyers will want. But we think this car's biggest selling point will continue to be something that really hasn't been affected one jot by this update, driving dynamics. More perhaps than any other model set makes, this one actually delivers on its brand's promises of a more interesting and involving drive. Plus, it'll help enormously that this car is also good looking and for the most part, pretty well equipped. In short, there's plenty here to like. Are there issues? Well, we are disappointed that today's pricing is so much higher than it was at launch. Uh, we'd still like to see a little more design flair in the cabin. And it is a pity that you can't have the sliding rear bench seat that some rivals do offer. These things aside though, this Attica remains in our eyes amongst the class leaders in the segment for smaller volume brand mid-sized SUVs. This is still that rarest of things, a car of this kind that's great to drive. Long may that continue.